Welcome to the Opinion Combination Podcast. I'm KJ Pilcher alongside Dick Briggs, getting ready to discuss uh, a little college wrestling here as we wind up the season with the NCAA Division I Championships in Tulsa. But before we get to uh, the D1 uh, National Tournament, we had some championship events this last weekend, most notably uh, the NCAA Division II and Division III uh, Championships. NAIA women also uh, competed, and um, you know Iowa Wesleyan had a, a champion there. But uh, first off, let's uh, let's discuss the Division Two championships that were held here at the Alliant Energy Powerhouse um, in Cedar Rapids. Uh, you know, I, I tell you what, I was really impressed with uh, the way the tournament was run and the competition at the D two level. Um, I tell you what, sometimes it gets overlooked because we have a lot of D3 programs here and a lot of success, um, in the state of Iowa at that level, uh, of course, D1 with Iowa, Iowa state and you and I, but division two has, uh, some really, really good wrestling in it. Right. Uh, right on both accounts. Uh, first of all, on the on the site, I was really impressed with the uh, the powerhouse and the setup that they have. It really looked classy. Had uh, you know a lot of black covering the you know curtains and the floor, and then they had their their red and green runners, and uh, the mats looked great. And so the facilities literally looked great. Uh, at Division three out in Roanoke, um, not quite as nice. I mean, it's a I've been to the arena and and it's a nice arena, but. They just didn't have it looking as good as, as Cedar Rapids did. So kudos to the Cedar Rapids group for getting that done. Um, as far as the quality of, of wrestling, absolutely. Geez, you know, I was, and I mentioned this to you when we were sitting down there, I go, you know, I'm trying to decide, you know, division two and division three, if there's, if I can notice any difference, I really couldn't. I mean, it looked, they're both so competitive. Uh, remember mm -hmm. division two, there's some aid that, that is, can be offered to, to their athletes and not in division three. So you've got a, a little bit different uh, kind of athlete there, one that's paying for their way. And, and, and a lot of, most of the time division two athletes are as well, because there's only so many uh, scholarships. So, so but uh, nevertheless, it, it's, uh, it was very impressive. I enjoyed it. Yeah. Uh, before we really get into the action, I want you to share the story. Um, that you had with uh, Western Colorado, because it was uh, a pretty neat situation. Um, you have history, a uh, brief history with the school there. Talk a little bit about uh, what you did and your interaction with the uh, Western Colorado uh, wrestling staff and, and athletes. Okay, uh, so I'm a, an alumnus of Western State college back in the, now it's called Western University, Western Colorado University. And, uh, um, but I went to graduate school there in 1979 and 1980. The, the athletic director and head wrestling coach, his name was Tracy Bora. And he was, he was big name there at the school and in division two wrestling, Hall of Famer. And uh, so Tracy hit me out there as a grad assistant. And uh, while I was out there, he gave me a, uh, 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 a uh, an old warm up, that old at the time. So I'm guessing it was from the '60s, because it was you know in the '70s that I had it, and it was it had been retired. And there was another one uniform that had been retired since that one even. So a mm -hmm. warm up. So um, anyway, then uh, it was a fleece warm up top, the old snap kind, you know, and they had tackle twill on the back, and it was just cool. It's just made, <laughs> really, you know, well built. One of those fuzzy looking things that you see in the old time pictures. And, and, uh, so I had that and I had had that since I was out in Colorado. And, and, uh, so I got the group, the team, I watched it on their last wrestler of the, after the first round, the 174 pounder came off and it was a win. So they're feeling good. And, uh, and I, I don't know the wrestlers and I don't know the coaches. I know their names and such, but I introduced myself and said, Hey, this was given to me by coach, uh, from by Tracy Bora. And, uh, and they, you know, they named their tournament after Tracy Bora. So it's a name they're familiar with. And, uh, and I said, I'd like to give it back. If you want to display it, fine. If you want to give it to a, uh, one of the wrestlers, fine. If you want to throw it away, fine, <laughs> whatever you'd like mm -hmm. to do with it. And, uh, so, uh, I don't know what they're going to do with it, but all of the wrestlers were there. And then 
there's a group of about 10 coaches and wrestlers and probably some more type wrestlers uh, you know, that were there. And uh, they thought that was really neat. It was, it was pretty neat. And, and uh, I, I requested that one of them put it on and he, he put it on and, and uh, it, was, it was neat. And they were all saying it was pretty cool. So it's just a neat, neat experience. And, and uh, you know, I hope it made them feel a little bit comfortable. You know, I had a, 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 an alumnus and a fan that's a, a Cedar Rapids native and and uh you know so they someone that kind of connected them with with cedar rapids so and then yeah. ended up, they did quite well yeah they end up getting fourth uh in the team race had a couple of uh, uh finalists i believe um you know so yeah good good tournament uh i i thought it was interesting you made the kind of the comparison to uh, uh bora is kind of that program's Chuck Patton from right. from you and I. Exactly, and you know he's he's to Western State what Chuck Patton uh, is and was to to the University of Northern Iowa. And of course, I was an undergraduate student at U and I, and and Tracy Bora and Chuck Patton were good friends. And we we went out one uh, my senior between my junior and senior year to a camp that Tracy Bora ran out there, the the Rocky Mountain Wrestling Camp, and I, so I got to know him and. And uh, he he picked me to be as uh, he Tracy uh, picked me to be as a uh, graduate assistant, and I, and I was very thankful. That I got to spend two. I stretched out a year and a half into two years, <laughs> two two <laughs> years. So uh, that was fun. But uh, you know, I still have some. I got my Rust, Western State College shirt on right now. I support man. So <laughs> yeah. So uh, uh, Upper Iowa, obviously Upper Iowa was the host here, and. Um, you know, they uh, they brought four down to the tournament, uh, put three on the medal stand. Uh, Tate Murdy became a two-time All-American, finishing uh, eighth at 141. Coulter Bai made his uh, national tournament debut, uh, getting eighth at 184. But uh, the big story uh, from the Peacocks, uh, former Monticello prep Chase Lundsman uh, comes away with the 165-pound title. Uh, he was, uh, the number three seed coming in, um, was an all American in 2020 when the tournament got, uh, canceled earned first team honors. I, I believe with, uh, the national wrestling coaches association, uh, was a, uh, qualifier the year after, but did not place, did not qualify last year. He mentioned he got six that the super regional and had a really bad day and, and didn't make it. Gets back to the tournament, um, makes a title run uh, with a 9-7 victory over, actually, somebody from Western Colorado, uh, Hunter Mullen, uh, the eighth seed that made the finals. And uh, Lensman comes away with a 9-7 victory. Uh, interestingly, you were Upper Iowa's first uh, national champion since Josh Walker won in Cedar Rapids in 2018. So... And a home sweet home for for the peacocks there when it comes to the national ch champions right and, I, and you know it's not their home they're still a couple of hours away but it is their home it's you know you got a good crowd you got a, you're, and they're you're, hosting the yeah right. they're uh, down the road. exactly that's uh, you're exactly right the people are there all the you know it's all friendly faces around it's the only division two school in iowa and uh yeah absolutely so it's it's their home for sure and and uh and they found some success, a couple of national uh, champs. That that 165 pound match, by the way, I thought was probably the most exciting finals match. That was a that was a heck of a match. Both wrestlers were going, man. Good match. Yeah, yeah. Mullen actually got the uh, opening takedown, but uh, uh, Lensman was able to battle back. Got uh, I think one in each period um, before Mullen uh, got one late. Uh, as well so uh thought it was interesting you know they talk kind of the uh, one of the ways that they kind of describe lensman or maybe a nickname or whatever is the machine uh, i think it's mostly based on the way he trains um and uh uh one of the things that heath grim talked about with lensman kind of going forward is not dealing with emotions right just being being that machine, being robotic as far as uh, the emotions and 
and stuff of a match and, and staying even keel. And he did that. We talked about how he, you know, gave up that opening takedown, didn't worry about it, just went right back to uh, work and, and that paid off for him. Uh, that happened to him in the quarterfinals too. And he, you know, unfazed and uh, 17th uh, national champion in upper Iowa history. So uh, really good performance from him. And even though he's a senior, he's coming back. He's got a COVID year and he said he's coming back. Uh, so upper Iowa is bringing back uh, all, I believe all four of those qualifiers and uh, certainly all three of those All-Americans. And now, just to remind me, is last year the the, the, the final year of COVID? <clears throat> you know, I am not sure. Uh, I have been so confused about who <laughs> still has one and who doesn't and carry the one and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, I, am, I am not sure kind of where that cut off. I need to have somebody uh, kind of break it down to, to the very, um, you know, roots of it all to, to really understand where that, uh, where that cutoff is and when it, they stopped getting that uh, COVID year. I, I'm glad that they did it, but I'm going to be glad when it's over too. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> I, I know where everyone's at. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Um uh, Central Oklahoma came away with a team title and two champions. Uh, they scored 121 points. Uh, Lander was second uh, with 78. Uh, St. Cloud State uh, third at 64 and a half. Uh, one of the interesting things with Central Oklahoma, they brought 10 qualifiers down, ended up with nine All-Americans. Uh, their two champs came in the two uh, biggest weights. Uh, 197 Dalton Abney uh, and heavyweight Sean Streck both won. Uh, a couple of interesting facts there. They are the they were the only number one seeds to win. I, as a matter of fact, I think they were the only number one seeds to make the finals. Is that if I remember right? So uh, that's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, definitely. Especially when you had. You had national champions getting knocked out in the semis, like Cole Leo was a two-time uh, national champ uh, for West Liberty, and he got beat in the semis by Jackson Roman from Augustana, who ended up being runner-up at 125. Uh, Zeth Brower, um, Landers uh, undefeated, defending state champ, number one seed. He got beat in the semis uh, after looking really impressive through the quarters. You know, it, it was just uh, Western State Mullen knocked off the number one seed uh, in the quarters. Hermosillo, who uh, had a real touching moment at the end after he won his placing match, uh, left his shoes in the center of the mat and kind of knelt down and received a standing ovation from the crowd, which is always touching. But, yeah, uh, it was a tough road for uh, the number one seeds. Yeah, and I think that's a little bit of Division Two, and probably Division Three. Although it didn't happen in Division Three this year as much, some. Mm -hmm. But you mean we get spread out around the country, and we talked about this before. You don't have as much travel at the, with those lower level schools, uh, so they don't get to see as much as Division One does. Uh, and you'll see in Division One as well, I'm sure. But uh, um, you know, so that's it's tough to see. But you, you know, there's a lot of upsets. You know. You have defending champs and the, uh, some undefeated wrestlers that didn't make the finals. <laughs> That's right. Uh, Abney's uh, uh, finals match, uh, uh, kind of, uh, I don't know how you would put it, just uh, kind of a interesting situation there where it was a rematch of last year's. Uh, final. Uh, he faced Derek Blueball of Indianapolis. Uh, and for the second straight year, uh, Abney um, came away uh, uh, with a victory in a title. Last year, I believe it was 6 uh, 0 uh, in favor of 
uh, Abney, and then this year, uh, one zero, um, for for Abney. Yeah, and, and you know, some guys put points on the board, some don't. He's his biggest win. He had he had a pin early on, then a, a major, but then uh, you know, a sudden victory win, and then that one point win. So you know, I always I I always tell my told my wrestlers, you know, when it comes to tournament time, a, a one point win is as good as a pin. <laughs> <laughs> right you know do what you got to do i guess to get that you know, move on and climb up that lap that podium but uh yeah you know so yeah you won one nothing but that's all right it's still like most people don't remember the score they're right right um uh lander you know i uh, believe uh they had a runner-up um at 184, uh, Logan Hall well, was their lone finalist. Uh, the the interesting thing about uh, Lander, they got second. Uh, they had six All Americans uh, after qualifying nine, but Lander is only in their fourth year uh, with a program. Uh, this is just their third NCAA tournament. Um, last year they had a champion, Zef Brower, who. Um, it was a two-time All-American, but did not make uh, uh, the finals at 141. Uh, he ended up getting fifth. But uh, just in, in their fourth season, they end up, you know, getting uh, second place um, behind Central Oklahoma, who won their eighth D2 title and 16th uh, national title overall, first one since 2007 or 2008. Um, but Lander, I mean – Boy, the uh, the success that they've had in a short amount of time is pretty impressive. Another uh, performance uh, of note, uh, well, a couple of them, actually. Uh, Adam State, uh, they came away with two champs. Um, Brendan Garcia, a former uh, Wyoming wrestler, uh, University of Wyoming wrestler, uh, won at 125, and then... Uh, at 149, Josiah Ryder uh, came away with his second straight title. The interesting thing there is last year, uh, Ryder and 157 pounder Noah Hermosillo, who got third, actually flip flopped uh, weight classes. So last year, Hermosillo was at 149, Ryder was at 57, where they both won titles. This year, Ryder uh, moved to 149. Hermosillo up to 57. Ryder comes away with a national championship. Hermosillo third, as I mentioned. And Ryder actually was named the outstanding wrestler of the uh, championships, getting a fall in the finals over Jason Hannenberg of Western Colorado. Um, so kind of an interesting uh, uh, thing there for Adam State. And then Glenville State. Uh, we mentioned Lander, who uh, has made big strides in uh, four years. Glenville State entered this tournament with no uh, All-Americans uh, in the history of the program. They end up with two, Gavin uh, Ocho uh, at 133, and then heavyweight Jared Campbell. Both ended up making the finals uh, with Quiocho uh, coming away with a championship with a 4-3 win over Trev Campbell of Chadron State. So uh, two big performances there. Interesting for uh, uh, Adam State and Glenville State. Okay, and I know you were mentioning about Lander uh, being, being a uh, fourth uh... – Fourth year in, uh, of, of, of having a program. Uh, also, should note that Lander is out of South Carolina. You don't hear a lot of wrestling schools uh, out of South Carolina. So I, that's right. good. I'm glad to see that, that happening. Um, yeah. So, uh, in, in Glenville, is that a new newer program as well, K KJ? <coughs> I'm I'm not sure about the history of uh, or how long Glenville's had a had a program. I'm guessing. It's probably relatively new, right? I don't remember hearing them. Even even if it's not new, good for them for having two finalists. That's yeah, 
crazy. And that heavyweight is fun to watch, wasn't he? <laughs> he was. He was. So let's let's move Eastern to the D3 championships there. <laughs> um, uh, you know, you kind of said this was a championship that uh, was kind of Wartburg's to lose, but Augsburg with a heck of a half heck of a good run to come away with a team title. Right. And yet, and and I, honestly, it was Warburg's to lose. They had they were set up seating wise. I think they were a talented team, and you know what? They lost it. They they wrestled. 17 spots below their seeds. Wow. Well, now, on the the, re, uh, the reverse of that, inverse of that is Augsburg wrestled 16 spots above their seeds. They had a national champion that was unseated and in uh, Sam Stoll at, uh, at 141. So, I mean, you know, it's just crazy. The, the, the opposite. It's like one team came to wrestle and the other team didn't really come to wrestle, at least not to their level. I mean, they had two national champs, but those are the only two guys that wrestled. They actually wrestled uh, one above their uh, their seed. And and, that, and to be honest with you, you know, at 174, Wartburg was kind of gifted with a, with a cup. You know, the defending champion has a, an ACL injury and is not able to even qualify for the tournament. And the defending runner-up, who had beaten Mulder from Wartburg, uh, mm-hmm. Earlier this year, pretty handily at uh, uh, at the at the national duels, Russell's eight seconds, you know, gets in his stance, shoots a double leg takedown, gets the takedown, and uh, grimaces in pain and and uh, pulls out of the tournament. He obviously came into the tournament with an ACL injury that was it was not he was not able to go on. Uh, the benefit factor of that was, like I said, Mulder, who then had opened the door for him to win the title, and then also. Uh, L.J. Richardson from Co. That's who who the Mike Ross was wrestling, the defending, mm-hmm. and uh, um, and uh, so Richardson <laughs> looked bewildered. He got taken down, stands up, and looks at his co- coach and goes like, "I, I didn't do anything. Well, I don't you know." Sort of a bewildered, uh, you know, as Ross is grimacing, and uh, and uh, so that that moved him along. He won his next match, made the semifinals, and he ended up sixth. So. Um, yeah, uh, I, I know Warburg's all excited because they had two champs and congratulations to those champs, but they're also disappointed, you know, that uh, they have to be that they didn't win their title um, and wrestled so far below their seeds. They did have uh, all Americans in, uh, so the champs were Zane Mulder at 174 and at 197, um, Mo and Dean, uh, he was uh, the, the, both were the second seeds and, and finished first. Uh, Ter- Zarin Tarakina, who was the first seed finished sixth and, and even two of his three wins were in sudden victory. So he, I don't know if he was injured or what, he did not wrestle to his ability. I don't think David Hollingsworth was the number one seed at 157. He finished sixth. Uh, and then Nathan Fuller uh, at 165 was also an all American in six or seven. I think I have wrote six, but I was thinking of seven, but uh, anyway, then moving on to the rest of the arc, uh, Co had a national runner-up, Caleb Reeves, and then uh, uh, he was, uh, like I said, second. And in his finals match, just the guy gave up a couple of takedowns. It's kind of Russell where he is. He's, he wants to get out and throw, and uh, gives up a couple of takedowns. And then the uh, the Wabash Russell felt just just basically wouldn't let him tie up and wouldn't give him pressure. And and uh, so Reeves never had an opportunity to, to take him to his down let alone to his back so and then richardson like i said was ended up six at 174 at 184 uh, they, uh loris uh had shane legal in the finals but legal was uh beaten and honestly legal did not look good in a semifinal or his finals match i didn't think you know at least not legal good i mean he won the semifinals match but he got taken down in the finals by uh, jared chinholzer from whitewater and uh it looked like the match was over it didn't have much fight left in it. You know, to me, it looked like it was, you know, you know, I, I don't think I can hang, hang with this sort of a guy attitude. So I was disappointed for Shane. Shane's a good guy. Sure. And at 157 for Loris, at, uh, Zeke Jones finished fourth. Uh, how about, uh, and Loris finished 15th as a team. Co finished 12th as a team. But here's kind of the, the surprise. 
Uh, University of Dubuque finished eighth, so they're top 10 team. They had three All-Americans. Uh, 125 brothers Brady Kuntz was seventh, and at 133 Dylan Kuntz was fifth. And then uh, at, at 285, Drake Aiello was fourth, they're, they're heavyweight there. And then I was kind of down on uh, Luther, uh, Luther's Donovan Core, not down on, but just questioning him dropping from 97 to 84. But by golly, finished third. So good for Donovan. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know. We, we were kind of, we thought that was a little bit of a head scratcher given how uh, tough the 84 pound field was. But, you know, he proved you was right there all along. So, right. So uh, I, I'm not afraid to say I was wrong. He did a good job. So, yep. uh, and uh, again, I don't know how many of these, these all Americans for each of these schools will be back with COVID. And it's not as likely in Division Three because Division Three is not, not cheap. Uh, and there's no no aid, so uh, you'll see it once in a while, but you know not likely. Uh, I would guess. You know the uh, the streak continues when it comes to Wartburg and Augsburg. Uh, you have to go all the way back to 1994 uh, when Ithaca won the uh, NCAA Division Three team title. Uh, to have anybody other than those two teams, you know, what, what's it going to, excuse me, what's it going to take um, for a team to kind of crack into that, you know, that real elite company with those two uh, programs? And is there anybody that's close? You know, this year someone was close, but then injuries took, you know, I think, uh, in that being Johnson and Wales, Right. Uh, and so, but, you know, injuries kind of took them out of it. They did have a champ at, at, uh, uh, at, uh, 125 in Fry, but, um, um, so, you know, they're in it with Ross, if he doesn't hurt his knee, it's a good bet. He's a champion at 174, but, uh, you know, so, you know, then you've got, now you're back in the hunt there. Uh, so what's it going to take? It's going to take a, um, and I think it's getting closer. It's gonna, it's gonna happen. It's got to happen sometime, right? But I think it's getting closer. And but you know, when you've got programs that have success like that, people are drawn to it. So the good athletes want to go to those programs. And you know, in some instances, the the in the program's mind, the the national title is more important than the individual title. And so, uh, you know, I I think you're gonna see some some athletes realize that and maybe make different decisions and. And, uh, and that'll draw them closer. Sure, sure. Um, you know, I, I just uh, I just think it's a really fun uh, level to watch compete. Uh, I've always enjoyed, uh, you know, the Division Three uh, uh, championships. Uh, do you know where they're at next year? Yes, they're it's in Lacrosse. In Lacrosse, Wisconsin, right, and uh, they had a champ uh, this year. Uh, uh, somebody uh, pretty familiar with Eastern Iowa, Dave Malachek, who used to coach in the Cedar Rapids area um, with uh, Regis and Sal. Um, coached at Wartburg, obviously a former UNI wrestler from Osage. Uh, they had a champ at one fifty seven with uh, Nolan uh, Hurdle. Um, so uh, congratulations to to Dave Malachek for for that and and the work he's done uh, you know at at lacrosse uh, over the years um, and then what other uh, championship uh, uh, final of of note uh, you know at one sixty five something you don't see very often if if really ever. Um, you had two brothers wrestle in the finals with uh, Nathan Lackman of Rhode Island and uh, Matt Lackman of Alvernia. Um, Nathan Lackman, uh, who won at 157 last year, moved up to 65, beat his brother uh, Matt three to one in sudden victory. And uh, that's just a, a cool situation and one that's even. Uh, kind of neater just because the brothers were willing to do that. Right. 
And so a couple of things about that match. First of all, uh, when you're wrestling your brother, that's not fun at all. I've, I've actually had to do that. Did you my older brother, Don, who was the assistant coach at UNI, and they had an alumni meet. And so he he's not an alumni, but he, they, you know, they made that the feature match. And oh. it, uh, myself against my brother is my senior year. So I'm the one, I'm a little bit heavier too. I'm, uh, um, I'm in college wrestling shape and he's seven years removed from it. <laughs> and, uh, and so it was not fun. So, I mean, I ended up winning the match and felt like I didn't feel good about it. It was not fun at all. So, you know, beating your brother, it, but you know, that was just for a little, little alumni match. Now I'll go ahead and put the national championship on the line. It's a whole different story. So it didn't get enough. It wasn't a very exciting match, as you might guess. It was a one-to-one -one match going into the into the overtime, into the sudden victory, which is two minutes. And then they kind of danced around in that. Uh, um, Nate, uh, Nathan made the shot, got in, and then Matt was draped over the top and did a really just. It was more like Matt beat himself than Nathan beat Matt, sort of thing. In that he tried a really reckless suicide cradle he kind of dove over the top trying to lock his hands and then did a cradle and then you know basically nathan was able to just score the two on it so mm -hmm. and then when they walked off the mat you know how they have the parents sitting on on the uh oh, the, so you know i think the parents were in the middle of the course because there's two different chairs two different corners for the parents right the red and the green and uh <laughs> when they went over they showed them hugging and they showed uh, the whole family and and there was, must have been a little brother or cousin or something that was right in on on uh, Matt's Matt's uh, you know hugging him and, and it was a really neat neat uh, to see that um, that uh, exchange and uh, you know the, they had a little uh, video clip of both of the guys and they said you know we'll compete out on the mat but when it's all over it's just a wrestling match and we'll come back to you know uh, loving each other and having you know holidays together and all that so. Anyway, yeah. um, well, uh, I know uh, the NAIA had their championship uh, in Jamestown for the women, um, and uh, one of the things of, of note there, um, Iowa Wesleyan, uh, they had an individual champ, uh, no real surprise uh given the uh, um her success but uh and and i'll uh i'll butcher her name all the time and i apologize um but uh doggo uh uh wachakwu um well i think you said it perfectly did <laughs> i i i i hope i hope uh but if not i apologize to her and jake Cato. Um, if I kind of gave it the John Travolta and the Oscars treatment, um, but, uh, she repeats as, uh, a national champ, uh, one of five all Americans actually, uh, for Iowa Wesleyan, um, you know, so, uh, a good showing from there for, from them, um, you know, um, as well, but uh, you know, the thing I, I think what she has done because she's also uh, made her mark, um, you know, at the at the senior level as well. Um, she's put together a, a fine, fine career. And that, is it over? Will she continue to wrestle an international? Yeah, that's uh well, I'm sure I'm sure she'll continue to wrestle uh internationally. Just trying to look up uh uh kind of what year she is as far as eligibility wise um for the Tigers. Uh she's listed as a sophomore, so um you know, she's out to a you know, she's put together a fine career as well and uh, she can add to that here kind of going forward um, for the Tigers. Uh, the other ones who uh, who moved into the, the top eight um, as well, uh, uh, 
Faith Cole and Mia Palumbo, um, as well. Um, I believe uh, just kind of looking here, um, those were those were two of the All Americans. Um, Isabel Hawley uh, at one forty three. Um, and America Lopez, who was the fifth seed at 170. Uh, Iowa Wesleyan finished seventh overall with 92 and a half points. Um, in a tournament that was run won by Southern uh, Oregon. So, uh, good showing there. We talked about how strong the women's uh, the the women's programs are at the NAIA level. We saw the NCA, well, the NCWWC tournament here in Cedar Rapids, but uh, NAIA has been kind of out front when it comes to women's championships, and uh, their uh, their the talent level there is just as good as uh, any. Yeah. And uh, good to hear or Oregon. Uh, again, Oregon State's kind of got it going. I'd love to see University of Oregon uh, bring it back, but I don't know if that's going to happen. But uh, uh, so, you know, maybe with the girls getting started up here, who knows, you know? So, mm -hmm. um, Also of note, uh, Grandview, uh, they produced their best finish. They ended up third uh, with 123 and a half points. Uh, 16 back of uh, Life University, who is the runner-up. Um, they had uh, they had a national finalist. Uh, Alexis Gomez ended up finishing second at 143 pounds for uh, uh, for the Vikings. So um, they had. Uh, uh, Eight total All Americans, led by Gomez. So a uh, good showing there for Grandview, who edged Menlo by a half a point for third, and then the University of Providence rounded out the top five with 102. So um, some good things there for uh, Grandview getting their top finish, um, and having a runner up in Gomez, and of course good showing from Iowa Wesleyan. Um, and they're two-time champ as well. Right. And uh, it seems like Grandview will, well, isn't far behind the juggernaut that is the men's program. So we'll see if the women can step it up to that level. <laughs> I, and I would not bet against it. Nope. So those championships were finished, and we've got one more left to go with the D1 um, uh National tournament down in Tulsa, Oklahoma, starting Thursday um, morning, I believe, uh, uh, 10 or 11 a.m. Uh, start time there for the first round. And um, we mentioned it last week a little bit with um, Iowa sending all 10, Iowa State having eight um, in the field as well, and then uh, you and I getting seven. Those uh, those three programs each have a number one seed. Those brackets were released after we recorded last week. Um, but no surprise – well, actually, uh, uh, there are four total. Um, Iowa has two number one seeds, but uh, no surprise. Spencer Lee, um, number one seed at 125. And then you have uh, Real, Real Woods. At 141, uh, for Iowa State, David Carr is the number one seed at 165. Again, no surprise there, especially after his performance at the Big 12s. And then Parker Kekeisen, we mentioned it, uh, you know, the way things could fall. And he ends up being the number one seed at 184, UNI's first number one seed since Taylor Lujan uh, held that in 2020 when the championships were canceled. Before that, you have to go back to, like, 2013 or 2014 with Joey Cologne, uh, who was the number one seed at 133 that year, one of those two years. Um, but uh, uh, Keck Eisen, 
looking to improve that uh, two straight third place finishes um, and looking to become a three-time All-American. Uh, that first session starts at 11 a.m. on Thursday. but Right. Um, KJ, it's kind of neat because right now the state of Iowa has is, is enjoying a lot of success in basketball, both the men's and women's, at the national level. You think about it, that the three uh, state schools – have four of the 10 number one seeds. That's pretty yeah, impressive. percent. I think that's, you know, that's a, what a great, great season. And hopefully they can, they can all four bring it home and, and uh, maybe some more uh, Iowa schools jump in there as well. But that's pretty impressive to start with. Yeah. And when you think Iowa is 31st in the nation in population um, to see what they've done while well, the way the programs have kind of uh, uh, bounced back at the D1 level for wrestling. And then you look at, uh, uh, you know, the basketball success on the periphery as well. I mean, this winter has been very, very impressive, you know, and especially when you have some transcendent talents like Spencer Lee and Caitlin Clark and um, Ashley Jones, the basketball player at uh, Iowa State. Um, you know, not at the same level, but you know, I, I still think Parker Keckeisen, uh, is one of the most, uh, entertaining and, uh, uh, one of the top wrestlers pound for pound, uh, in the country. He's the energizer. And David Carr, David Carr too. Right. I think David Carr is right on the verge of being one of those, uh, you know, transcendent figures right so kekaisen to me is the energizer bunny david carr has, has grown into that weight class i i questioned it you know when he first moved up obviously last year he didn't repeat but uh man he looks smooth and looks good there and and uh it's gonna be it's gonna be tough to beat him i think but i mean anything can happen in division one uh nationals and uh so uh i i thought this might be kind of fun for for us you and i to do it and then maybe even the the, the listeners they can they can uh jump in as well i mean they're, they're, this is pre-recorded but you can do it in the comments or whatever the, right. uh, so we go weight by weight kind of break down each weight class but then as we're doing this think of these questions which number one seed is like this is probably the least likely to win it you know as we go through the number one seeds and then also which is the deepest weight weight class and then mm -hmm. who do you think a, a dark horse team is not to win it, but maybe to make, break the top four or five. That's not necessarily, you know, there, maybe, you know, who's that team that can jump into that. Just, aren't there four uh, trophies that are handed out? I believe so. Yeah. So who, who's going to maybe jump into the trophy hunt. So um, anyway, so I thought that might be kind of fun as we're breaking down the, the weight classes. Okay. Well, let's start. Let's just jump in right at 125. Um, I mentioned uh, uh, Spencer Lee's number one seed at 16-0. Uh, He'll face the winner of Tucker Owens uh, of Air Force and South Dakota State's Tanner Jordan. Um, Pat Glory, the number two seed. I think uh, everybody's expecting that 1-2 uh, that clash in the finals on Saturday night. Um, but you've got Liam Cronin, the number three seed, and uh, Matt Ramos, the number four seed. Remember how Ramos kind of jumped out uh, to a big lead and kind of surprised Spencer Lee in the duel with Purdue, but uh, Lee uh, uh, responded and, and still uh, won very convincing, convincingly in the first period. Um, one other uh, qualifier of note, Jack Wagner. Former U and I and Iowa wrestler as number twenty six seed. Uh, he's twenty two and eight. He'll face Oregon State's Braden Kaler, uh, the number seven seed, who's twenty one and seven out of the gate. So, um, one, I don't see this. I don't really see anything being a surprise. Um, I think of all the weights, this one could go kind of uh, right along with the seeds. Right. And all of in the uh, um, with all of the uh, 
fantasy teams that people pick, you know, <laughs> I'm guessing uh, 125 might be the first pick in a lot of, in a lot of those, those uh, fantasy picks <laughs> with, with uh, Spencer. So my question, I would, I would think so. <laughs> yeah, my question at 125 is, can anyone keep lead to a decision? <laughs> so, and, and you know, likely with, with the finals match, because, you know, those don't tend to be very wide open, but, but uh, you know, Spencer, he, he's so good on top and controlled about any, anyone. So it's, yeah. and that's the big, big question. It's, it's huge. It's, it's huge. It's a, a potential four timer. That's never happened in Iowa history and only five times. So four. four, he's the fifth. Yeah. Four times. And uh, you know, each of the, and even in those four, there's been a couple of them that, you know, that are not, that weren't crowd favorites when they happen, you know, uh, Pat Smith, when he got his, was a little bit of controversy there, and sure, and, and uh, Steber, you know, with the with, the, with his win over Oliver, you know, one of the previous titles, and you know, so there's always a, a little bit of, you know, so with Lee, you know, it's going to be a you know a Kale Sanderson type thing. I hope if he can get it, so it's not no one's going to question it. Well, here's the interesting thing. So you think he could be the fifth um, four time champ? Well, that, yeah. Do I think he can? Well, do you yeah. think he will be the? Do you think he will be the uh, fifth four-time champ? Right. So Dake is the last one. No, Steve uh, Dake. And so Dake. I, I think it won it. Yeah. I'm going to say no. Oh, pull it up. Do you want to know why? Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. Okay. Because I think they're going to end up making 125 the final bout of the evening. Oh, <laughs> and Yanni de Hakamahalis will go for his fourth before that. So I think Yanni will have the opportunity to be the fifth, Spencer the sixth. I got you. Oh, you got me on that one. Uh, yeah, yeah. I was being a little sneaky there. Yes, you were. Uh, Good call. So it, it'll be interesting, though. It'll be interesting to see how they, uh, how they decide to do that because you've got four guys going for a fourth title. I know Spencer Lee is really probably has a bigger brand, um, but you know I think Cornell and Iowa are going to be in a similar, not necessarily in a similar situation, but uh, right now I've got Iowa as a finishing second and Cornell finishing third, so both will have be part of teams in in a trophy race pretty much. Uh, both going for their fourth title, uh, both, both really uh, uh, good personalities, uh, likable personalities. So it'll be interesting to see what they do. Will this be the year that they decide not to go linear with the matches and, and kind of have – 125, 149 is the final two, and then just jumble up um, the weight classes. Yeah. Uh, I, I've not heard that that was, wasn't even an option, but that would be very neat if they did that. I, I don't know. I don't know if that is an option, um, but it'll just be interesting to see how they handle that. Uh, I Right now, uh, my first thought is that the final – as long as everything goes to the seed, um, one thirty-three will probably be the first one, um, and then go on to uh, uh, having one twenty-five be the the final yeah. um, championship. But uh, let's move on to one thirty-three. A little bit of a change here, so I've kind of got to draw. Um, they've had a couple. Uh, there have been a couple bracket changes um, here. 133 and 149 have had wrestlers uh, pull out, I believe, McGonigal um, of uh, – uh, I can't re remember where McGonigal's from, but I think he pulled out at 133. So you've got Brody Teske, who's the 23 seed for Iowa. Um, Zach Redding moved up to the number 14 seed uh, for Iowa State. Then you've got Kyle Biscaglia, uh, who's the number 15 seed uh, for UNI. And then um, a former Iowa 
prep, uh, McGuire Midkiff, uh, the number 32 seed uh, from North Dakota State who wrestled at Council Bluffs, Thomas Jefferson. So um, you've got number one seed, Roman Bravo Young, uh, number two, Dayton Fix from Oklahoma State. Uh, the three seed is Vito uh, Anjou from uh, Cornell and then Michael McGee of Arizona State. Uh, the top four seeds there. Um, boy, you know, I just, I don't know if there's, uh, I don't know if there's an underdog capable of knocking off uh, RBY and, and Fix and keeping them from facing each other on Saturday night. I'm I'm not with you on that. I think that okay. Arjal is I, he's keep an eye on him and fix keeps things close. You know, uh, so you, I, I and who knows he might be looking past. I don't think he would. He's a seasoned veteran, but right. he might be looking you know ahead to, to RBY and and uh, that would be foolish. So we'll see on that one. I I, I mean fix is I think the favorite, but I, he, it's not a given. That's for sure. Now, okay. as far as the, the changes. Yeah, the, Vito's really good. Not to, you know. Right. Not to overlook him, but. Right. I as get far, what you're saying. As far as the changes are concerned, I think Redding benefited from that. He goes from being uh, second match against Fix to being second match against. <laughs> Are you I just put <laughs> him up. So I might Vito. help a, slightly. But then uh, Biscaglia went from from second match against RBY to second match against Fix. So it's, you know, I don't know. <laughs> Doesn't help much there. So, Pick your poison there at uh, at 133. The, the, their seeds weren't necessarily great, but but uh, so it didn't help that they got bumped. They got bumped. That's that's a pretty deep weight right there. Uh, you know, at 141. Um, We've got uh, Real Woods is the number one seed at 16 and 0. Uh, Casey Swiderski from Iowa State uh, is the number 24 seed. Uh, Kale Happel, uh, the number 14 seed from you and I. Um, Woods will face the winner of Josh Mason of Bloomsburg and uh, Cal Miller of Maryland. Swiderski so has Moshe Schwartz from Oklahoma, the number nine seed, and Happel has number 19, Matt Casimir from Columbia. Uh, the number two seed is Andrew Alarez from uh, Northern Colorado. Then you've got Cole Matthews at Pitt, number three, Brock Hardy uh, of Nebraska, number four. And I tell you what, this is one where, you know, you could see some upheaval. Um, you've got a semifinal, which – or a possible semifinal um, between uh, Brock Hardy and Real Woods. You know, that was one that had a scramble and flurry at the end of the match that, you know, possibly could have gone Brock Hardy's way. Um, so that's not a given there. Um, you know, Cole Matthews from Pitt, really good. I think he's somebody that, you know, could be a – could be a spoiler and then it you know uh at five and six you've got uh ryan jack from north carolina state and bo bartlett from penn state that you know if you sleep on them uh it could cost you right and and uh i'm looking at ryan jack potentially beating uh brock hardy if they get to that point in the quarters uh oh, so it could be it could be jack versus wood Woods in the semis, and then uh, and, and then Alan Hart from Missouri is the eighth seed. So, you know, if, if things fell fell to seed, uh, real Woods Woods would have to go through uh, Alan Hart, who's he's not a that's not an easy task either. So, um, you know, and we'll see. That's what makes it fun. But uh, but and you know, with real Woods, as we know, he keeps things close. So uh, he doesn't give up much, but he also doesn't take much either. 41 is one of those balanced weight classes. Yeah. You know, uh, we'll move to 149. Um, I was, uh, and this is another one that uh, kind of got shifted a, a little bit um, with uh, uh, 
John Miller, the number nine seed um, from uh, Appalachian State, uh, I believe has a knee injury and is unable to compete. Um, but Max Murin will still have uh, the number eight seed for Iowa. Uh, Panero Johnson will stay at uh, the number five seed for the Cyclones. Um, Colin Real Buto, uh, he moves up to, I believe, the number 15 seed um, at 149. And then, uh, yeah, the number 15 seed for, for him. And then, Michael Blockus uh, moves up to the number 10 seed for for Minnesota. You know, he wrestled at UNI, Crestwood, and New Hampton. And then you also have Austin Gomez um, who will move up. Uh, he's at Wisconsin. He was a 15th seed, <laughs> uh, which just is mind-blowing. Uh, obviously, he was banged up at the Big Tens and, and everything, but still – um, you know, the former Cyclone, now uh, Wisconsin uh, standout is uh, somebody to kind of keep an eye on one of those high seeds um, or low seeds, however you, you view that um, at 149. Right. And, and Gomez has a, a win this year. Of course, he's in, he wrestled injured in the Big Tens and then had that, it was in a slam call that followed that in the match. And, and uh, so you know, he fell way down in the big tens and, and that's a big reason why his seat is so low, I think, but doesn't he have a win over the Akamahalas this year? Yes. Yeah. That's his win early on. His, he's yep. got a win over the number one seat. So he went from being in the same uh, first, you know, having a second round match with Sasso that I, and I was looking forward to that, but now I, I'm looking forward to, he and, and Partsko at from ASU, who's the number yep. two seed. Uh, so, uh, you know, Gomez, who's now sitting at, at uh, 14, could knock off number three there poss possibly if he's healthy. Now, if he's not, you know, it looked like a knee injury that was pretty, you know, at the end of the match, after, anyway, looked pretty pretty beat up the ones I was watching the Big Ten. Uh, and you kind of mentioned, uh, you know, we mentioned uh, Diakama Hollis. Uh, the number one seed, you got Sam, Sammy Sasso uh, from Ohio State, number two, Kyle Parco from Arizona State, number three, and then Caleb Henson uh, of Virginia Tech um, at the number four spot. Um, there were some really quality wrestlers uh, throughout this bracket, but I just don't see – Yanni being uh, denied his fourth title. Well, being the number one seed, he's got a, you would theoretically, a, a, an easier route to the finals. I mean, it's, nothing's easy, but at least it's going to be lower seeded guys. Uh, unfortunately, Max Murin is the eighth seed and he's in his quarter. So that doesn't bode well for Max. And, mm -hmm. you know, Max has been, he's done a, such a good job as a hawk, you know, that, you deserve better than that, but it's just such a tough weight class. Jeez. So uh, at 157, uh, we'll take a look at uh, uh, Kobe Seabrex, the number 14 seed for Iowa. Uh, you've got Derek Holschlag for UNI, who's the number 22 seed. Uh, Seabrex will open with Garrett Modal, Wisconsin. Um, Holschlag will uh, open with Michigan State's uh, Chase Aldade. Um, and then uh, the number five, 25 seed, Jason Kreiser from uh, Iowa State, has number eight, Ed Scott from North Carolina State. Not real good draws there for uh, the, the Iowa guys. Uh, the top seed, Austin O'Connor from uh, North Carolina. Uh, number two, Levi Haynes, who is the Big Ten champ. Um, then uh, the three seed is Peyton Robb from Nebraska. And then North Carolina State's uh, Jared Franick, uh, the number four seed. Um, not, not real good uh, draws there for the Iowa guys uh, with who they have uh, first round. Right. And, you know, just looking at it, 
I mean, Kreiser is in the same quarter as the number one seed O'Connor from UNC. And then Seabrick's in the same, his second match, assuming he, he wins, would be Peyton Robb, Nebraska. That's not good, like you mentioned. So I almost feel like Hoslog, if he can pull that first round upset, is sitting a little better than the other the other two. But that's a big if. <laughs> you got to beat the number 11 seed first. Yeah. And Saldade had won like uh, 12 or 13 straight matches before he lost in the in the Big Ten tournament or something like that. Had a double digit uh, uh, win streak snap. So he's had a good season and kind of overlooked him uh, a little bit. Um, he had a win over Seabrick there. But yeah, right now, Holschlag is one that, uh, you know, I think could could surprise some people. Right. Well, you never know. We'll, we'll see. I'm gonna the one I'm gonna be watching in this bracket is Levi Haynes. I just didn't get not get to see him much at Big Tens, and and uh, obviously pulled off the big upset and and won it. Uh, so yeah, I think he's got the curiosity the curiosity of a lot of the people around the country. Um, you know this is a this is a bracket where I think. Um, we have a little bit of a, a party crasher. Um, I have Peyton Rob coming away with uh, getting revenge uh, in the semis from the uh, Big Ten finals, and I have him uh, winning as the number three seed here. And I have no problem with that. I think that's a, an excellent choice. Uh, yep, that could certainly happen. Uh, so we – We'll move to 165. We got David Carr as number one seed. He's uh, 22 and 0 this year. Obviously, uh, a big boost um, with uh, the pin and sudden victory over Deegan O'Toole and a second win over uh, O'Toole in, in two matches. Uh, O'Toole's number two seed. Uh, Carr will have the winner of Harvard's Josh Kim. And Wyoming's Cole Moody. Uh, then you have Austin uh, Yant, uh, the number 17 seed. He'll open up against number 16, Joshua Gonzania of Columbia. And then number six, Patrick Kennedy of Iowa, as number 27, Will Fermato of uh, Appalachian State. Um, this is one. Uh, when you talk about one of the best weight classes, I mean, it's hard to, uh, hard to look past this one. Um, when you think about just how deep things are. Um, right. But I think this is David, David Carr's, uh, David Carr's to win. Yep. A couple of comments here uh, regarding Patrick Kennedy. He's in a good spot, I think. Um, I like where he's at. He can mm -hmm. wrestle the first two matches tough and then get to Hamity, the number three seed. I, who knows what could happen there? You might see him in the, uh, in the finals or certainly in the semifinals. Um, and then, uh, and then, uh, but here's the one for me, keep an eye on, on, uh, Quincy Monday. Okay. He's the fifth seed. Uh, you know, he, he, I mean, that's a guy that could, you know, who knows? Um, uh, so don't sleep on him. And he's, you know, he, he would have, if he were, were to win, uh, beat the number four seed, he would then have David Carr in the semifinal. So we'll see if that happens. Yeah, it, uh, it'll be uh, interesting to see a possible second round match between uh, Cam Amin and Patrick Kennedy. Uh, that was a match that uh, Kennedy scored a, a late ta late takedown to win in the semifinals at the at the Big Tens, uh, we'll see if Patrick Kennedy can uh, uh, do that again. Uh, you know, uh, Amin will be uh, wanting to get revenge uh, for that. But, uh, yeah, kind of kind of echo your thoughts there um, with the bracket. And, you know, I just think we'll see a rematch of the Big 12 finals uh, Come Saturday night. I don't know if you this stuck out to you, but I'm looking through the bracket and I see the very bottom. Wyatt Sheets, the 31st 
I just saw it. This is key because I was still sober too. I'm like, holy cow, how far the he has fallen. Right. No, I I just noticed that uh, as well. So, um, let's move to 174. Uh, not a lot of local representation here. Nelson Brands uh, is number 11 seed, uh, 10 and six. He's uh, he's got uh, number two uh, or 22, Alex Faison of North Carolina State, who I think had a pretty good uh, ACC tournament, um, actually. And then uh, you've got uh, Kay DeVos of South Dakota State, number 13 seed, 25 and seven. He's got Alex Kramer of CMU, uh, who's the 20 seed. Number one seed, Carter Starochi from Penn State. Then you've got Mikey Labriola, the number two seed. Number three is Mikai Lewis from Virginia Tech. And then Chris Foca of uh, Cornell, uh, the number four. Uh, what are your thoughts about the 174 pound bracket? Well, personally, I think I think Lewis is going to come out on the bottom over Labriola. Um, okay. And then I, I then I it doesn't matter because Starochi is going to win in the finals. <laughs> So I could be wrong at the bottom. Who knows? But I just think Starochi's that that good. No, I I I agree with you. Um, I didn't I didn't really think about Mackay and, and Labriola. I just was you know I just don't see anybody touching Starochi um, here. So it doesn't really kind of matter, right? Um, I, even though it does, but. Yeah, I, I like your uh, I like your thoughts about uh, uh, Mackay Lewis uh, uh, getting back to the finals. Um, there, you know, there are some there are some really good wrestlers, you know, throughout the really the top, uh, you know, seven or eight, um, top seven, you know, with plot, but they're just not in the same league as those top three or top four uh seeds in my opinion right yeah i don't i don't see anyone i agree with you on the top three and then really strochi i don't yeah i don't see anyone touching him so at 184 uh you've got uh, uh parker keckeisen is the top seed he's 22 and one for you and i he'll face the winner of Anthony Carmen of West Virginia and uh, Jaquan Anderson of George Washington. Uh, Marcus Coleman of Iowa State's number five seed at 19 and three. He's got uh, number 28, Jacob Barrera of Hofstra. And then uh, Ava Saad, the 12 seed at 18 and four, has number 21, Giuseppe Hoos of uh, the University of Buffalo. Um, and this is where Things kind of get muddied up uh, quite a bit. Uh, you've got uh, Kekai's in the number one, Trent Hidley uh, from North Carolina State, the number two seed. At number three, you've got two time uh, national champ, uh, Aaron Brooks of Penn State. Uh, the number four seed is Trey Munoz of Oregon State, uh, who is a, a national qualifier. Um, Previously, and I, and I think he transferred to uh, Oregon State. So, um, yeah, you know, 84 might might be one of those most stacked weight classes when you when you look at kind of who they have even beyond uh, the top five where you've got Hunter Bolin of Virginia Tech is a seven seed, Caleb Romero of Ohio State's number six. Uh, Travis Whitlake of Oklahoma State's number 10 seed. Um, you got Matt Feinsilver of Michigan as the number eight seed. This is a this is a stacked weight class and a very deep weight class. And um, we, we were talking about this and you called it. So kudos to you, uh, uh, Kakaisen, having an opportunity to be the number one seed. Hey, there you go. And uh, so I'm glad you were right because – it's good to be number one at this weight class. When you're three, you know, number three is a two-time defending champion. Yeah. And uh, you're right. And I don't know if you noticed, potential second-round match uh, could be Coleman and Assad if they both win their first-round matches. So that's yep. another 
keep an eye on it. Uh, this one, um, like Keck Heisen getting to the finals, but I just think the winner's coming out of that bottom half, and uh, I think Aaron Brooks comes away with uh, a championship here. You know, the money's on your what you just said, but I'm not, I'm not deviating from my Panther. <laughs> <laughs> And that's my heart talking. <laughs> yep, and purple runs deep, which <laughs> which right. is fine. You know, and, and if there's one person to do it, it's him. Yep. You know, I, I really think so. I mean, as good as Trent Hidley is, um, I don't see him beating Aaron Brooks. Uh, there's just something about the way Kek Heisen wrestles, uh, you know, full bore. And I know Brooks has had his number over the years, but, you know, uh, that dam's going to break sometime, right? It's got to, uh, if you keep chipping away at it. So, you know, I hope he does. Uh, that would be a, a neat story, a real, real cool deal. But I just don't, I just don't see it happening, even though it could. Well, you were right about the seed. We we'll, we'll hope you're wrong about this with Parker. <laughs> <laughs> So we'll move to 197. Um, we've got uh, younger Bastido of Iowa State's number 13 seed at 16 and 7. He's got number 20, Evan Bachman of, uh, of Virginia. Um, number 14, Jacob Warner of Iowa at 15 and 6. He has Cam Caffrey uh, of Michigan State, the number 19 seed. And then Tanner Sloan, the uh, runner up at the Big 12 tournament. For South Dakota State, former two-time state champ at Albert He's the number seven seed, 23-2. and two. He's got Ohio State's Gavin Hoffman um, in the first round. Uh, your top seed is Nino uh, Bonacorsi of Pitt, who's 16-0. and 0. Then you've got Bernie Truex of Cal Poly, 13-1 and 1 is the number two. Then you've got Rocky Elam, uh, who was the uh, Big 12 champion. The number three seed and Ethan Laird of Ryder, the number four. And, you know, you really, you really can't stop there when you, you're looking at the, the, the two finalists from a year ago are your number nine and your number 14 seeds. And Max Dean of Penn State, the number nine seed now, defending national champ. And Jacob Warner of Iowa, as we mentioned, is the number 14 seed. He was a runner-up last year. I mean, that's just uh, – that, that's hard to kind of wrap my mind around. Um, and then you have the Big Ten champ, Silas Allred from Nebraska, who's the number eight seed. Uh, you know, we mentioned Sloan at seven. Uh, I mean, Michael Beard, the former Penn State wrestler who's beaten uh, Max Dean um, earlier this season. Um, you know, he's the number five at Lehigh. Is this where you get kind of an upheaval of, uh, of seeds and, and get that dark horse, uh, champion? Well, this, like you just said, this weight class is all over the place. So if, uh, if D Dean and Allred win their first round match, you'll have a, in the second round, you'll have the big 10 finals. <laughs> And, and that's a number nine and number eight seed. So, I mean, this it, it's all over the place. I like where Tanner Sloan is sitting. Mm -hmm. um, he, he has a seventh seed. And in that quarter, he, the highest seed above him is the number two seed, Truex. Uh, so I, I like where he's at, you know. So hopefully Tanner can can uh, w win win through and get to that to that uh, quarterfinals and then, then beat the number two seed. So anyway, uh, it, yeah, this one, roll the dice. And if you wrestle this one, 10 different weekends, you probably have 10 different medals, <laughs> champions. So, <laughs> so this is, this is the weight class where I think it's going to kind of be topsy turvy a little bit. Um, I, I have bought into the Nino Bonacorsi uh, line before and got burned by it. Um, I am not buying in this year. Um, I think your finalist from the top half is going to be Michael Beard of Lehigh. Um, and I think he's going to end up facing the winner of Sloan and Truax. Um, and I'm going to go with Bernie Truax 
and I think Bernie Truax uh, wins it all at 197. Okay, I haven't I haven't finished my brackets yet, so I can't really help you there. Nope. I'll just have but, to say, uh, I'll just have to agree or disagree. So I'm going to disagree. <laughs> and and I like I said, I think whoever gets out of that uh, two seven matchup is going to uh, wrestle in the finals. I think they'll get the better of Rocky Elam or whoever gets uh, gets through that that little quarter of the bracket um, there, which probably will be Elam or, or Warner as far as, uh, in my opinion. So uh, we'll see. But I think 97 is the one where we'll see the most upheaval uh, when it comes to, to seeds playing out. So last weight, heavyweight. Um, Tony Cassiope is the number four seed at 21 and three. He'll face uh, Jerron Smith of Maryland in the first round. Uh, you've got Tyrell Gordon of UNI at 18 and 11, the number 13 seed. Uh, he's got number 20, Connor uh, Desette of Oklahoma State. Uh, and then uh, Sam Schuyler is number eight seed for Iowa State. And he's got number 25, Michael Wolf Graham of West Virginia. Um, Boone McDermott, the former uh, Dubuque Waller in Iowa Central uh, wrestler. He's the number 24 seed for Rutgers at, at uh, 16 and 5. And he's got uh, Northwestern's number 9, Lucas Davison, um, right out of the gate. And of course, a uh, little, some people are pretty vocal about how the top uh, seeds played out here. You've got uh, Mason Paris, uh, the number one, but Wyatt Hendrickson, the number two from Air Force, uh, moved ahead of uh, Greg Kurt of Penn State, who's number three seed. Uh, as we mentioned, Cassiope's number four. And then you've got Colton Schultz, the number five seed, who was a national runner-up to Gable Stevenson uh, last year. So uh, kind, of, uh, kind of interesting how uh, Hendricks – Hendrickson kind of broke up that uh, that Big Ten grouping in the top seeds. Right. And uh, uh, going to number five seed, uh, Schultz, the uh, ASU guy, remember, he had, he's a fun guy to watch, too. So keep an eye on him. Hendrickson has a ton of pins, and uh, he was one of the most dominant wrestlers, I think, in the country this year. Uh, you know, top 10 for sure, maybe even top five. Or, I, I'm not sure. I didn't see that. It's been a while ago, but. But uh, the, uh, the unfortunate thing here is with our four Iowa connections, they can wrestle each other in the second round. So McDermott can have Skyler second round and Gordon could have Cassiope second round if they all win the first round. So yep. That's right. <coughs> uh, who do you see? Uh, who do you see coming through here? So, uh, well, I, I think Paris, but it made it tougher. With Hend I, my, I think it probably made it tougher with Hendrickson jumping in at two. So it might have made the number three seed, if you follow my thinking here, into the number one seed because it bumped four and five. <laughs> so so now uh, it's just, I don't know. I still think Paris is the guy. He's just been wrestling so well and so much confidence and aggressively and the matches that I've seen wrestling anyway. So I'm going with Paris. Uh, I am going with Kirk Lee. Yep. I'm not sure why. I just have a feeling, you know, he was so close to kind of uh, breaking through. Uh, you know, all it takes is being able to finish one of those uh, earlier shots. You don't even get to, to sudden victory. Um, I, I just, I just see, uh, I just see, uh, Kirk Lee kind of making a run and and finishing things off here uh, and getting a title. That's an easy choice to make. I agree with you. He's he, he was what a sudden victory away, a, a uh -huh. match away in the Big Ten finals, and he's going to have the team race. The team, you know, Penn State gets on a roll at nationals, and and it's like I don't want to be the guy that doesn't win, sort of an attitude. And so I, I I'm with you 100 percent on that. So. You know, and, and talked at the D two tournament with uh, Win Magazine's Mike Finn, 
And one of the things we talked about was just how Penn State seems to make the biggest adjustments and gains between the Big Ten and the national tournament. Yeah. And I think that's one person who uh, who could benefit from that that time period and make the difference come Saturday night. Right. Actually, I think they're top two. Friday night. Yeah, I would go with, with 97 and heavyweight for Penn State. Could really make benefits there. So. Sure. Yep. Sure. Okay, so my cho- choice for least likely to win was, and you mentioned it, was 197. That thing's all over the place. It's just scattered. So you see, I think that the, the number one seed is the least likely to win. Then my second one would be at 157 with O'Connor and UNC. So there's some other weights that are just seem to be locks almost. Yeah. Uh, the, yep. the, the deepest weight, my deepest weight was, I think, 149. And there's some deep weights too. But that I just think that, that 149 is. And then the dark horse team to make the top four or five. I don't know. Where is Cornell ranked right now? Cornell's ranked, well, it depends on what you kind of look at. Like Flow Wrestling has them third in their tournament rankings. Oh, well, then I can't pick them. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm going to, so in that case, because there's lots of choices. You've got, I think you've got uh, Oregon State, Missouri. Um, God, there's, two or three others that are in there as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're not coming to my mind right now. So I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with uh, um, Missouri. Where are they ranked? <laughs> are they in the top four? Well, in, the, in their tournament, and like I'm just kind of going off Flo's tournament rankings uh, for March 7th. Uh, they've got uh, Missouri tied for fifth uh, with NC State. So, uh, they're terrible. kind of uh, they're kind of on the six, um, kind of in that five six uh, range. So, so they, have, they have Penn State one, Iowa two, Cornell three, Nebraska four, NC State and Missouri tied for fifth, and then you've got Iowa State number seven. Okay, so, by Virginia Tech, Ohio State, and Michigan. Okay, so the, the dark horse team to take home a trophy that's not, I guess, is Missouri, but that's not much of a step from fifth to fourth. So I'm going to go with Missouri. Okay. All yeah. right. Um, I, I like that. I think that's a, a, a team that can jump up. Um, you know, and I'll go ahead and say I would say if things fall right, uh, it could be Iowa State. They could – they could make a jump, and the reason why I say that is because at 97, we didn't really talk about him, but yeah. and, he's, and he's, he's been up and down, but, you know, it, when he's on, he can beat anybody, um, to be honest with you. And, and he, yeah. I, I know he's in a, in a tough little section, but – you know, he can be in a I, – I like Michael Beard coming out of there, but, you know, uh, I think Bastida's as good as anybody there, and that could be a fistful of points that kind of punches them past uh, NC State or Nebraska. Um, you know, uh, like Coleman being an All-American. Uh, like Panero Johnson, where he's sitting, you know, uh, Sam Schuyler could get into the top six at, at heavyweight. He's number eight seed, but, you know, could improve his uh, uh, positioning in a couple spots. And I think that group of teams, uh, say from like four through eight, are going to be separated by a very small margin. Right. And then if you, for Iowa state, if you throw in Redding and yeah. Zabersky, who are likely to have to do it on the backside, but both of them are great wrestlers. So we'll see there. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, I don't know. Um, I don't know if I have a real, uh, Dark horse, you know, beard maybe at uh, at one ninety seven is the five seed. Um, 
could see that if if you count a five seed as a as a dark horse. Um, I I would, but you know that's that's somebody I could see I could see winning it all. Um, and then what was the other one? The, the number one seed least likely. Yes. Uh, to win. Boy, that that is tough. Um, you know, uh, not taking anything away from Austin O'Connor, but you know, Rob and Haynes are, are both uh, really good. You know, heavyweights stack. Even though Paris has been kind of the kind of the guy there, um, you know, I, I've already said '97 is the one that's that could go caddy wampus as far as seeds go. So I guess I have to, if I'm going to be consistent, I'd have to say Bonacorsi at uh, 197, but I would also throw in Parker Keck eyes and as much as I hope he wins. And uh, I think he's going to be in the finals. Um, it's hard, hard for me not to think Aaron Brooks isn't going to be the 184 pound champ. So right. I know I wasn't real definitive on that, but I threw out uh, I threw a, a few things against the wall there as far as number one seeds not holding that uh, holding that spot come Saturday night. And we'll see. Well, all right. When do you leave? Uh, we'll head down uh, tomorrow. Um, you know they have pre-tournament press conferences, and I just. Found out uh, uh, from some of the organizers there that uh, the pre-tournament uh, press conferences with the um, wrestlers and coaches. Uh, the wrestlers will be uh, Spencer Lee, Austin O'Connor, and Roman Bravo Young, um, as well as Yanni DeHaalis, uh, Dayton Fix, and Mason Paris, part of that group. Uh, coaches, interesting uh, that uh, the top two coaches are, are not going to be there as far as uh, the team rankings go. Um, no Kale Sanderson or Tom Brands. Uh, they have uh, Cornell's Mike Gray, Oklahoma State's John Smith, of course, Oklahoma State hosting uh, the championships. Uh, Missouri's Brian Smith. Then you've got Oregon State's uh, Chris Pendleton. Uh, North Carolina State's Pat Papalizio. Um And obviously those two have Oklahoma State connections, so they make uh, uh, they make a lot of sense being a part of that, uh, that pre-tournament press conference. Uh, and then Nebraska's Mark Manning, who uh, a lot of people have uh, uh, Nebraska kind of on the verge of uh, being in that top four. So well, that starts tomorrow. And then, of course, wrestling – Gets underway 11 o'clock uh, at the BOK Center um, in Tulsa on Thursday. So looking forward to that, and it'll be a fun time. Should be good. All right. Out of anxious well, well, we'll uh, we'll be back next week to uh, kind of go over the uh, D1 results and see how everything uh, falls out uh, down in Oklahoma. Um, until then, again, thanks for, for watching, everybody. And, Coach, why don't you send us out? Let's keep wrestling on the move.